Hey everybody, Sully Man here. Today I'm going to show you how to create this text effect, which is essentially yeah, it's a half tone, um, but it's a lined half tone. Um, a lot of people know half tones as the kind of dot fades that you see, uh, and that's a technique used in printing um, to create a gradient effect. Um, this is just a aligned half tone. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. I'm going to show you how to uh, show you how to do this and start from scratch. I'm going to drag this out. Uh, basically, we started with an old English font. You can find those online pretty much anywhere. Fontsworld.com, Defont, thousand and one free fonts.com. Uh, there's there's tons of places to get them. So uh, this one happens to be Old English Five. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, there's my text. Uh, I'm gonna knock it into orange, and then I'm gonna go to Object, Envelope, Distort, Warp, and you can keep it flat and and do your warp at the end. Uh, but I'm just gonna kind of show you this way. Show you how versatile this. Kind of technique is, and there's there's tons of ways to do this. You could create a uh, uh, a pattern fill and and then warp that, and you know there's just some extra steps that I don't find too necessary. This pretty much is the way that I uh, use it all the time, and allows you to kind of um, edit it on the go as well. So, anyway, so uh, here's so there's our font. We applied an envelope uh, distort warp to it, and we'll just kind of doesn't matter whatever bend you want and uh, we'll just uh, let's go with 39 that looks good so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a uh, square or rectangle tool I'm going to drag out a rectangle I'm going to knock it into black uh, grab my selection tool and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this by holding shift and you'll see that it kind of snaps it into 45 degree angles uh, then now with the direct select tool I'm going to grab this one corner, drag it up. So we're just kind of basically creating a nice kind of sharp line. I'm going to reset the bounding box by hitting Merge in Pathfinder, and you can see that it kind of reset the box. And now I can size this fat if I wanted a nice fat line or thin line, which is what I want to use. Nice little thin line. Size it down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this and judge the distance by the outside. I want it to be on the outside of the text. I'm going to make sure I have that object selected. Hold Alt, and you'll see that um, when I do that, my cursor turns into a duplicate of itself. You see the little black and then the white arrow. That By holding now Alt over an object and then clicking and dragging, you're going to duplicate that object. So you can see this is going to then create a duplicate, but I also want it to stay in the same place. I'm going to hold Shift while holding Alt. You'll see that it keeps it in a nice straight line. So I'm going to go all the way to the outside of the text. Once that's done, I'm going to select both those objects now. Go to Object, Blend, and then make a blend. And you can see it's kind of creating a nice halftone fade. It starts from, you know, a lighter um, color down to the darkest black. And if you're if you know how to kind of blur your vision a little bit or squint, you'll notice when you do that, it creates almost uh, you know a black to uh, white to black gradient, you know, with a grayscale feel, you know, look to it. So now that that's done, you can. Uh, you know, go back in if you wanted to, go to Blending Options, go to Specified Steps, and you'll see that it's already at 83. So this is counting 83 um, increments or instances um, of those two lines. So you can change that if you want to. Go to 100, hit Preview, to toggle, and you'll see it, you know, kind of makes it look smoother. So I'm going to go ahead with that. And that doesn't matter. You can kind of play around with it. And what's cool about this is that um, you could then, you know, move these towards the bottom of the text um, and then in your pen tool your sub tool um, for the pen is convert anchor point tool you can then click on this anchor point here and drag out you'll see that, that the path is bending but I don't want it bending in that direction I want to bend out in this direction so let's go ahead and do that whoops kind of clicked out but um, whoops sorry hang on let me select that object again Convert anchor point tool. We'll drag this one out, bend it in the right direction, and then use my direct select tool to kind of refine these um, handles further. And you can see that I'm bending out, creating an arc um, with this. So we can drag it down, and place it, move it around, all sorts of stuff. Um, the other cool thing about this is that um, when you're using this technique um, by using a blend, you can also edit uh, the two um, objects themselves that create the blend. So you can angle those out further if you want to to change the angle 
and all sorts of stuff. I'm going to hit undo and go back to keeping them straight where they were. So that's the other great thing about this. Um, and once you kind of get the look you want, then all you have to do is basically go to your text, go to object, whoops, make sure you're using your selection tool, not your direct selection tool. Go to object, expand it, we'll hit OK. And then what we want to do is we'll, we'll knock it down for this style, um, you know, to get a look to where it's not um, exactly the text. Basically what you can do is um, I'm almost creating a beveled feel to it. So I'm going to grab that, go to object, um, path, and then we're going to offset the path. And we want to use a negative number because we want it to shrink. Uh, we don't want to, to expand from the original size. We want to shrink, so we're going to use a negative number. 0 0.05 should work pretty well. My document size is 14 by 14 inches, so 0 0.05 should be a nice small. But we can go ahead and hit preview, and you can see um, it's, it's sizing it down. Here's the original. Toggle that, and you can see it's going to knock it down at 0 0.05. Hit OK. And with that selected, I'm then going to go to Edit and Cut. So that's still there in the background. It's the copy information is still there. So then I'm going to select my blend, head over to my transparency tab or panel, and if you don't have that open, go to Window, and you know go all the way down to Transparency. Make sure that's open. So with that object selected, you'll see here we're going to go ahead and make a mask, and then with that once we create the mask, make sure you select the actual mask itself. You can see that you can toggle back and forth between the actual object and the mask when we want the mask. So from that initial cut, we actually cut out that offset. We're going to go ahead and paste that in place now. And you'll see, um, it's you can see that slight, um, the, the uh, halftone effects, it, it, it's there, but it's kind of faded out. And basically, it's, it's a transparency. That orange is holding transparency information. That orange isn't 100% white or 100% black. Because in a mask, 100% black completely erases everything, whereas 100% white keeps it. Uh, so with that still selected, I'm going to change that orange, and you can see it in here, to white. And then it brings in our halftone um, uh, line effect in 100%. It's no, no longer uh, any transparency to it. So with that, I'm going to go back to the uh, artwork toggle that and you can see that I can select by let's grab our magic wand select that and then we can change the color as well and that creates the effect so there you go and you know if you wanted to expand all that instead of having that path you can go to edit uh, or is it edit um, no object I'm sorry uh, flat transparency just make sure you do it at a high resolution and pretty much uh, you can preserve alpha transparency if you want or over prints and spot colors we'll just do that Hit OK, and you'll see. It just kind of basically expands it out for you. And then you can merge down if you want. Merge again. You'll see if I deselect. It's all kind of there, but anyway, that's just some extra steps. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to put our background back in. And we'll go ahead and group them. So when you move that text around, and the cool thing about it is with this technique, um, you can you don't have to use just lines. You can actually create your own little halftone if you wanted to. So let's, I'll run you through that real fast. So basically, let's go ahead and ungroup this. I'm going to grab this guy, delete it. Um, I'm going to knock this into black so you can see what I'm doing. Here's a circle. I'm going to alt, click and drag to duplicate. Then I'm going to size it down. Select them both. Object, blend, make. And you'll see it kind of creates its own little halftone effect. You could then alter that if you want to. Let's go to the blend, blending options, change it to specified steps. We'll knock it down to let's say four, hit preview. There's its own little halftone effect. We'll size it down to what we like. That's kind of cool. And that what's great about it is you can click that path. Let me zoom in on it. You know, if this, this dot size is what you want, um, you know, shrink them down to the size you want. Let's look for that path. Let's select the object. Hit our direct select, make sure we get the right anchor point, drag it up. You can see there's a half tone effect. With that spacing, I don't like, so we'll go back to um, the blend. Go to blending options. Let's head back to 7, see if that fills it in nice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. So with that, we want to expand object, expand it, because you can't blend a blend. 
Um, and then I'm going to alt click and drag that to the outside. Do the same technique we use to um, create the lined halftone. Blend. We'll hit make. And you get the same thing. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and just go object expand. Hit OK. This is another way to do it. Object. We'll go to envelope store warp. It's going to keep the warp that we used on the text as well. So we'll hit OK. We'll drag that down so it's at the bottom of the text. We'll move it towards bending in the middle, kind of matching the other one. Uh, and then we can head over to transparency. That we actually have to create the because we copied. Um, so we removed the old offset text. So we're going to go to path. Offset the path. It's going to keep the um, offset we used before. Hit OK. I'm going to cut that out. Select our halftone um, uh, graphic. And then over at Transparency Panel, we're going to hit Make a Mask. Select that mask. Paste in place. Change it to white so it's 100%. And there we go. And if you want to change the color on that, make sure you head back. We'll double click to get into isolation mode for that. And then we can knock it into a yellow. Get back out of isolation mode, and uh, we're all set. So that, in a nutshell, is creating a halftone. And you can basically use any graphic you want to create that halftone, whether it's lines or these dots or uh, you know stars, any shape or any kind of graphic that you want to use. You can use uh, by using a blend mode and and uh, you know with a blend mode bending out the anchor point handles and, and kind of tweaking it that way or using a warp uh, and some mass to kind of get it uh, locked into the shape. Uh, so yeah, I, ho I hope you guys took something away from this today and uh, can improve your artwork. And as always, like, share, comment. Um, and if you want to help support the channel, check uh, down below in the description my Cellify channel. And uh, you know, there's some pretty cool stuff in there to kind of help your artwork out. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Same thing. Uh, and then these are different types of heads. You know, these, uh, you know, you have the rattler head, this is kind of like a tree snake, uh, a different angle mug shot, which you can kind of see here on this guy, and like a python bow contributor head here. Uh, and then you can kind of mix and match heads. And uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the background and kind of show you uh, the whole deal here. So basically, let's go ahead and grab this guy. 